Do you know what's happening when you're passionate and you love something too much? Well, you wake up, you do your weightlifting and your workout, and then you jump into financial statements and look at what's happening. Um, I got carried away this morning and I read the entire uh, financial statements for both National Bank and RBC, decided to spend my morning doing this video and uh, telling you a little bit more about what's happening this quarter. Um, for those who are new to the channel, yesterday I've reported BMO and Scotiabank for my analysis, and today we're going with these two banks so if you want you can look at right below in the description click on the other video and you'll see what's happening with BMO and National and Scotiabank sorry um, so what's happening with National and Royal Bank well yesterday my one word was meh this time it's really Really in a sense that you'll see in this video, uh, both banks have reported flat earnings and pretty good results. And I was like, what's happening in there? You know, um, BMO earnings were down roughly like 20% and then Scotiabank was down roughly 47% and then National Bank, Royal Bank, they're like minus one or flat. Eh, there's something wrong there. So let's dig a little bit deeper and see what's really happening in this world. So um, this is RBC CEO saying that we are on in during uncertain times, duh. Um, talking about robust capital and liquidity position. So basically they're telling you pretty much all the same thing. Uh, COVID-19 has unknown impacts on the economy, but we're good banks, so trust us. What caught my attention in his speech was that he mentioned that he's focusing on prudent approach to risk management. And you'll see that in a second why it's so important. Um, BMO CEO was a little bit more um, looking forward to the um, economy, economic recovery. Scotiabank was on the break because he knew that um, international markets were not doing well. And then Royal Bank, they're just saying, oh, we're prudent. We're like very solid and very prudent. So that's that's, that's really Royal Banky uh, type of statement saying just that, you know, we're sitting on our throne and then we just wait because we're the biggest bank across uh, Canada along with TD, obviously. But then when you look at the reports and you see net income down 2%, um, EPS down 1%, so pretty much it's kind of like business as usual. It's kind of weird, right? But then you find out why. Provision for credit losses only 675 million versus 2.83 billions in April. So basically what they're telling us is they were um, quite aggressive back in April and now they don't see that the economy is deteriorating, um, their, their loan portfolio is not too bad and they're just saying, oh, you know what, we're just going to add another uh, 700 million as provision for losses, which is not too much. Um, interesting enough, when they disclose their loan portfolio, they show 7% of their total loans that are uh, vulnerable to COVID-19 economic impacts. So if you remember yesterday, we were talking about BMO and, and Scotiabank, they were between four and 5%. Now we're up to seven, but then smaller credit uh, provision for credit losses in this case. Kind of interesting, but you know what? Just because they put so much in April, maybe they just did the, their accounting right and their assessment right, and they're good going forward. Um, the results, their strong results were also supported by a very strong uh, performance in the capital market. So they're up 45%. Um, they made a lot of money in trading fixed income. So obviously uh, lots of volatility in the past three months. That paid off for any banks that has a good capital market uh, business segment. They also did uh, well in the entrance, so plus 6%. And what you can see um, on the small graph on your right is is that less than 40 uh, less than 50% of royal bank business is concentrated in the classic personal and commercial banking so now they rely a lot more on capital markets wealth management and insurance to make money and this is paying off most importantly, uh, CEO was talking about being uh, robust and having lots of liquidity where we have the highest uh, capital uh, ratio uh, equity tier capital ratio sorry 
so far at 12%. So the other two banks were at like 11.3, 11.6. So now we're at 12%. So definitely very strong position for all bank. So in one word, is the dividend is safe? Well, absolutely. Um, PL ratio is under 50% for this quarter. So I just did earnings per share at $2.20 and the dividend remains unchanged, which is not a surprise. I already told you yesterday, do not expect any dividend increase for the rest of the year for all uh, our Canadian banks. But you know what? You can sleep tight. You don't have to worry about Royal Bank. They're gonna keep paying you and they apparently sit on a ton of money, which is a good thing, right? Now, let's move on to National Bank, where CEO Louis Vachon, uh, who is a great man, by the way, small disclaimer, I do own shares of both Royal Bank and National Bank. Um, I've worked for National Bank for a good, I don't know, like 13 years, um, 10 years as a financial planner or a private banker, which uh, I really enjoyed. And um, what he's saying there is basically hard to predict, very uncertain, lots of uncertainty, but he's then again focusing on a strong position, solid balance sheet, def defensive position. And then again, he's highlighting quality credit portfolio and prudent approach to provising. So both CEO are telling you, oh, we are very prudent. We know what we're doing. And you'll see what's happening in the next slide is they kind of like did exactly the same thing that the Royal Bank did with their provision for credit of losses. Um, they went from four, 500, so half a billion dollar in April to 143 million, which is still almost twice as much as it was back in July, 2019, but not too much either. Um, now I must say, I'm, I was a bit disappointed when I was looking through the investors presentation for the quarter because I didn't get that nice looking graph about the loan portfolio. So I had to copy paste this part and then calculate it myself. Um, ended up at, actually I have it right there, 3.7% of their loan portfolio that is being called as vulnerable, um, which is not too much, but you'll see that in these uh, categories, we don't include the energy sector. So basically they're trying to look good. Um, I can get that but you know it's kind of like shaky i'm pretty sure that we should look at how much they have exposure in the energy sector at the same time unfortunately i didn't have enough time this morning but if you're a shareholders and this is what i am i'm going to go deeper and look into that so probably that their loan vulnerable exposure is roughly between five and seven percent pretty much in line with what we have um, at the other banks. Um, so you saw net income, earnings per share, pretty much flat, pretty much business as usual, but the provision for credit loss helped a lot. And then they got growth from international exposure, which is kind of crazy, right? Because we're always saying, oh, the most international bank is Kosha Bank, they're doing so great. And that's the narrative that they're gonna, they want to, um, to throw at you, that they're an international bank and that's going to grow uh, their business faster than the others. However, over the past 10 years, Scotia Bank has not uh, delivered the, uh, the merchandise. They have not delivered the expected results. Um, obviously, the exposure of international banks for national bank is a lot less, but last year they completed the purchase of ABBA Bank in Cambodia, and this is what brought a lot of this growth for this quarter. Obviously, they also have a great financial market and um, wealth management division. So they're up 5% and 2%. So as you can see, pretty much all banks so far have been dragged by classic personal and commercial banking. And those who are doing a little bit better, well, they're doing it with capital markets, wealth management, a little bit of international exposure or insurance for Royal Bank. In terms of common equity tier capital ratio, we're at 11%.4, uh, which is flat versus April. Then again, business as usual, nothing to worry about. And this is pretty much what I have to say about the dividend as well. We're talking about a very low payout ratio, so under 50% when you look at the dividend per share and adjusted earnings, um, strong CET ratio again. Uh, in both cases, uh, for National Bank and Royal Bank, we have decent payout ratio, uh, very robust balance sheet, so you don't have to worry in either of those. I don't expect any cut from these guys uh, for the upcoming uh, quarters. Uh, 
probably they're going to reassess as the economy recovers in 2021 when they will increase their dividend. But in the meantime, as an investor, I don't really mind what's happening about that. Um, I'm happy with those results. They fit with my investment strategy and uh, my investment thesis for both banks, and I'm just going to keep holding them. Now, if you wonder what you should do with other types of holdings or if you're too much invested in Scotiabank and then you were quite disappointed yesterday when you saw my video, well, today I have a webinar where I will discuss basically the playbook that you should have for this fall, uh, depending if you're a growth investor or if you're a retiree, uh, if you're looking for your portfolio to generate income, I'll disclose two different playbooks. Um, this information is obviously already sent to my DSR members, but I'll discuss that a little bit with you guys today. If you're late with this video or you cannot attend the live event, please register in the link below, in the, in the, link, in the description. You will get access to the free replay whenever you see it fit to watch it. Usually the webinar is about 50 minutes and then I stick around for uh, answering all your questions. It could be about uh, Canadian banks, but it also could be about the economy, about gold, about the US market. I'm all open to your questions. I just love to do those webinars. I have this feeling that we can um, all together invest with more conviction so we can enjoy our retirement. And this is what we're going to do this uh, Wednesday. Uh, so make sure that you enjoy and make sure that you like my video, sorry, and uh, that you subscribe to the webinar and we'll talk to you later on today. And until then, stay invested.